Hello everyone. Thank you all for being here on my channel. I'm excited to share a new dream I have had with you tonight. It's a very special dream to me because I was needing some confirmation from the Lord this week. And I've written some handwritten notes, quite a few pages. If you stay till the end, I will reveal both dreams. Okay. So if you would go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel, Rapture Dreams, for my dream and others in my family's dreams that I have shared. Also, I do sermons and times teachings. I've also just made a couple of Watchmen style type videos sharing world news and signs in this new platform. My husband has um, been helping me with some uh, new uh, clips, world news. We're putting it together with scripture. It's really, really good. You guys, you should go back and look at some of those new videos that I've posted. Um, along with the sermon here. I will put at the end of the video some little links that you can go directly to those video pages. Okay. And on this new platform, all of this will be dedicated to the return of Jesus and the rapture of the church. Let's give all the glory to him. Amen. Okay. So if you stay strong until the end, I will reveal both dreams. I'll touch up on the little one that I'd already shared to the channel. And then the new revelation I just had to go along with it. All right, this dream is a new revelation, an extension of my previous rapture dream. I have already posted to this channel. I only, the only rapture dream I have ever had. I've had it for about 10 to 15 years, so. And to go with my dream, one of my favorite stories in the Bible, I like to read a short word from Matthew, chapter 14, verses 29 through 31. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. And Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. I've tried myself this week to return to total faith and trust in Jesus. For a moment this week, I felt as though I might need to stay uh, to save more people for God. But something in my spirit knows I don't want to be here for the tribulation. I have to leave this world. I love Jesus too much. I can't stay fastened to trying to save everyone. I cannot be of or cling to this world. And it says in 2 Corinthians chapters 5, verse 2, We grow weary of this world in our present bodies, and we long for to put on our heavenly bodies, like a new clothing. And in John it also says, chapter 15, verses through 19, If you were of the world, the world would love you. But I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Know that it hated me first, Jesus. So, in my previous channel rapture dream that I've had for 10 to 15, I was left behind in the tribulation. I was arrested for my faith in Jesus and uh, separated from the others. A very skinny window, I could see uh, foreigners, possibly Chinese soldiers, policing down in the streets um, with strapped rifles. My husband scales the barbed wire fence, okay, climbs in through that small window, and we get out together. Uh, I had that dream before I married or even started dating my husband. So that's something a little interesting for you guys there. Um, also, on my channel, I not in my notes, but I just wanted to make a quick personal note. I had some revelations and prophecies about Russia and Ukraine before they invaded Ukraine. I saw them surrounding. I saw how all that had to do with what the Bible was saying that they would do in the last days. The Bible tells us everything that... Um, Israel and Russia and these places um, would do. They would surround Israel. Um, Damascus would fall in a night. You know, the Bible gives many prophecies. And so I, I had a huge Holy Spirit in me when I made my video for the predictions, the, the predictions for 2022, uh, Rapture's Coming, Jesus is Returning. And in that video, a week before... Russia attacked Ukraine, I basically said, you know, that they were going to, they were going to, uh, not to give credit to myself, all credit to, 
to the Father, Holy Ghost that lives through me, Jesus inside of me, told me that, you know, we were we were in this time, we were in the latter days, so I just saw it setting up for Gog and Magog. If you don't know what that is, I suggest highly to go research um, that part of the Bible doing with the end times. It has to do with Russia. So, I had that dream. And I had that dream before I married or started dating my husband. He climbed that barbed wire fence, came and got me through the small window. Uh, and to note here, I said he was trained in the U.S. military and it did a tour before I met up with him, before I started dating him, before we got married, while I was having this dream. Um, and it was a small window, so a window of opportunity. So the small window of opportunity was because we were and are in the last days. Jesus is coming back for us soon, just like he promised. Okay, so I've had a new dream two nights ago. After having a doubt about being left behind, you know, to preach, it says in the last days, sons and daughters would prophesy. Man's servants and maid servants alike would preach the gospel to the whole world. And um, I've gotten comments about being a divorcee or being a, a woman and that you shouldn't suffer a woman to preach. I believe that in the Old Testament, maybe we didn't have woman preachers in that time because they weren't taking them and their word seriously. Um, but it says in the last days, in the latter days, sons and daughters would have dreams and see visions and prophesy. The maid servants could preach along with them because it's just such a, an excess at a time where it's needed. Everybody needs to try and gather the family. So I'd like to encourage now my women preachers to share your own dreams and um, go straight to the scripture. If you wanna preach and you're worried about being a preacher, um, I would just say to really come from a place that comes straight from the Bible. That way nobody can call you false. Nobody can call you false. And of course my dreams are my dreams but i do believe like it says in the bible that holy spirit would be poured out and that we would see things that he would try to reveal himself to us in the last days so uh i said to myself lord i believe in you the most i know it you're coming i see myself in the great wedding feast and in the trib before i was fully saved uh I'm not a lukewarm Christian anymore or a sleeping Christian anymore. So when I cried out and I said, Lord, I believe in you the most. Why would you leave me? If I were to be left, I would know it's so I can continue on the work of God to get to people to be saved during the trib. I just know I don't, I don't want to be here for the tribulation. I, I want to go to heaven with my babies. Um, but if it was the Lord's will to do, I would do it with as little to no fear as I possibly could tell my mind to do it with and just really follow what was ever on my heart to do if it was the Lord's will to leave me to save more people. I just feel like we're in the last hour. Time is getting very, very short and I'm clinging to that. It's, it's hard for me. I wanna go in the rapture. I believe in Jesus Christ completely. Okay, so I, but I was clinging on to my family members who I felt need more word, but that there was little time, like we were in the last hour. I could feel it in Holy Spirit. Jesus threw me so strongly that this generation would not pass away until they saw all things. I still don't know the day nor the hour. I don't claim to. I just am so watchful of prophecy, Bible prophecy fulfilling itself in real time all the signs at one time. Um, just like Jesus said that he would, he told us when he would come, how to look for his coming, how we would know the t a time, Lord. The disciples asked him this, how will we know a time, a season? Um, so even if the Bible says, and a lot of people cling to this verse, that nobody knows the day or hour, yes, that may be true. Um, but a generation would not pass away until they saw all things fulfilled and prophecy could not really fully be fulfilled in the end times without Israel. And um, they're about to celebrate their 74th or 75th birthday, land of Israel. Okay, so we're gonna get into my new dream. So I've had this new dream 
And I'm, I, I'm at my childhood friend Stephanie's home. She lived in a house that belonged to her grandmother, two stories, an old home that I loved. In my dream, I could see the property. First, she had all these pecan trees planted in huge rows along a couple of acres, which she did. She did, and um, that kind of scared me a little bit, I guess, in my dream world, seeing the rows planted, and then inside, all of a sudden, I was inside the home. So, the pecan trees that were planted in huge rows, in perfect lines. Her room was upstairs. It had a balcony we weren't allowed to go on. At the bottom of the stairs was her living room. We used to dress up as elves as children and work the Christmas tree farm so they'd always have a big tree as tall and as high as their very tall ceiling in their living room. From floor to ceiling, um, they'd always have a huge tree because we were on the farm a lot as kids. So. Um, it wasn't winter because I didn't see the tree there in the living room, which was always put up early every year. Something was different though. It was Stephanie's house, but it wasn't. Because there was a very fancy fireplace there. Creamy and white, you know, kind of that off-white um, with a European style molding I'd never seen before. I turned because I thought that it was weird. I'd never seen it in the house. And my friend was there and her mother, Miss Wendy, a very sweet woman. Uh, she used to take us all to church every Sunday. She played the piano. She also would take us to the nursing home to cheer up the old folks and just a really good influence in my life, which I would understand why I would have this dream now. Um, even though we haven't been in contact for years, I just know she's still with the Lord and see each other again. Well, they were both there in front of the living room window, looking up, her and her mom. This window I'd never seen there before, in the house before, so it stood out to me as well. In my first tribulation dream, the window was so small and faint, I could barely see a way out. It was skinny, thin, small, short little window, could barely see out of it when I saw the soldiers down. We were in traps like an encampment. Um, but this window was so large that it covered floor to ceiling. It was a beautiful, normal day outside in both dreams when I looked outside the window. Two very different feelings though. The first dream I had 15 years ago that I've had for years, that small window of opportunity. Um, I just knew it was a small window of opportunity now because we are in the last days. Um, I just been feeling that type of way that I'd already explained to you guys, just being so deep in the word and wanting everybody to come to God and just seeing people, you know, reject it has been hard for me lately. So, um, Yes, both windows. The the one in this dream kind of gave me comfort, made me feel better because we were looking out the large window. And um, then all of a sudden, immediately, my dream changed scenes. And I've heard this happening before in rapture dreams, but I was like, how do you change a scene so immediately? But in my dream world, I do know that this is, this is what happened. I was sitting in a chair at the bottom of the stairs on an airplane. I said to myself again, this is weird. Airplanes don't have an up and down stairs. I saw that I was directly sitting in front of the exit door. A bright sign was large and neon, and it said exit. I was trying to sit patiently, waiting to get off the plane and leave through the glowing exit sign. But I was noticing everyone else around were unaware, moseying about without caring, not noticing the exit or the stairs. I couldn't see their faces or their eyes, and none were smiling, and they weren't dressed. They had on all black, and I was alone by the exit, and I woke up. It does get to me. I, I want everybody um, to know the truth, because when you have the cure in your hands, if you know somebody doesn't know that the punishment, the wages of sin is death, and God is giving us what we deserve. If he's judging us, you know, by his morals instead of our own, you know, we're all guilty. Um, but when Jesus paid the price on the cross, I really do believe that he paid for that sin, that if we would only just but turn and believe in him with full blind faith, he said, you guys see me, you see me heal and you believe in me. How much more 
will it be for those who have faith who have never seen me like you know us 2000 years later so i now i know and i believe this dream means two things is what god put on my heart i've been listening to him hard lately everything that he says i've just been listening two things Jesus is coming for us in the rapture incredibly soon with no time left to waste and the most people are not ready. And two, I'm scared. Not afraid the way that you would think. I have total faith in Jesus. I feel like I'm already there and a part of his family sitting at that table. I'm scared because I felt as though I haven't reached enough people. Even my own family, I still need time to work on them more. That's how I feel. I want to go in the rapture so bad, and as a believer, I know well the destruction that will meet this earth during the seven-year tribulation. I'm going, but if uh, the Lord's will be done, if I were left, I know it would be because he had this job for me to do. I don't mean to try to sound brave or self-righteous. I just truly trust the Father with my spirit. And my baby's uh, spirit, by the way. I feel like my babies need me in heaven more. And that's why you probably will go ahead and rapture me. Sorry, just fixing my little bangs. Okay. And I just know that the power of God is in me through Jesus. I want to heal people like he gives us all the authority to do. And if I were in the trib, I would tell everyone about the deception. Like that in Israel. Whoever is left behind, the Jewish community will accept them as their Messiah after the rapture. That's going to be the Antichrist, whoever they accept. You know, or if UFOs pop up like a sign and wonder from the devil, it's going to be a cover-up for all the disappearances of the Christians. I do not believe in aliens. I truly believe that's why the, no the news is so focused on aliens right now. These lights that turn on a dime, I'm not saying that they aren't real. I'm just saying that it's a devil's trick that they have been preparing us with Satan for a long time now to explain away the rapture and that people will believe it because they already do. But trust me, God is Lord and it's a trick. So join me in prayer. I'm also praying for Israel. It's Passover week, but also the Muslims are celebrating Ramadan. They vlog Jesus from worship, uh, Jews from worshiping on the temple. Terror attacks in the cities. Lots of people were hurt. I believe that was like Tel Aviv or that city there. I'm also praying for Ukraine as Russians uh, invade and kill more innocent women and children and men every day. If you like this news, please check out my new Watchmen Style Type videos. I have several on my channel from world events leading to the end. The signs are all in place. <coughs> the, the scriptures really come in alive in front of our faces. Giving credit to the prophets and the disciples in the Bible as they predicted what would take place. Before we see the Son of Man return. Uh, I guys, I just have one more prayer that I'd like to say. Uh, the reason why it's taking me longer to make regular sermons like this, and I have in place started doing some end times um, around the world news clips with scriptures, um, is because of my health. So if I could get you guys to pray for me and my health. I had an unconscious um, seizure for the first time in my life uh, without trauma of a car wreck. Um, my brain had started to bleed. I had spent a week in the hospital. They explained it to me that it was a neurological disorder because it was brought on by nothing. And um, so the vessels in my head have become a type of cluster. And um, it's just causing me to now be on seizure medication, which you guys know how I feel about medicine. Um, I'm not always completely on board with pharmacia. So um, just pray for me about that as we go and look for a better neurologist. Um, and yeah, uh, in God's name that we all be healed and that, um, you know, before the Son of Man returns that some people will come to the light 
and that their heart of stones be turned to heart of flesh and they can hear the word that's being given to them because it is our souls that are at stake. Okay. I would like you guys to have a very blessed night and don't forget to subscribe. I'm dropping several Jesus videos each week now with new content. And I'd like to bless you all in the name of Jesus. I love you guys. And until next time, um, like I said, I'll be, I'll be doing end times news a lot now and just tying it in with the whole rapture dreams theme because we are dreaming of the rapture. So you guys have a good night and come back by and see me.